Colorado is celebrating Independence Day. We have a list of events to attend, including the fireworks show alternative that some communities are turning to. We really want to be innovative and new and um, do something for our community. Plus, the ways to keep your pets calm during a busy night of fireworks. The 4th and the 5th are usually the busiest days for us throughout the whole year. Holiday travel hits pre-pandemic levels. We are seeing an airline industry that is stretched. But millions of Americans are facing travel nightmares getting to and from their destinations. And seed libraries are growing in popularity. People are like, that's an awesome resource for the community. We'll visit one helping feed people in Colorado's high country. We start at 11 with a live look outside. Plenty of sunshine and some high clouds out there on this 4th of July. Perfect weather for grilling, going to a parade, or spending time outside. Thank you for spending some of your time with us. We want to start with Katie LaSalle now. Katie, we could see temperatures touch even past 90 degrees here on Independence Day. Uh, yes, we're looking at a high of 92 in Denver. It's already quite warm, partly cloudy skies, increasing cloud coverage as we go through the day, and we can't rule out the chance for a few passing late day storms. I'll show you that momentarily, but right now it's 83 degrees in downtown Denver, already in the high 80s out at DIA, into the mountains, 60s and 70s filtering in, and it's already 94 degrees in Burlington, where it's going to be hot this afternoon. Taking us through the rest of the day, daytime highs will be in the low 90s, downtown Denver, up through Boulder into Highlands Ranch, 60s and 70s into many of our mountain towns this afternoon. Any risk of severe weather is low, but we will be seeing a few thunderstorms pop up, so if you're grilling outside in the backyard this afternoon, and evening do expect a 20% chance of an isolated storm. The main threats will be some pockets of moderate rainfall, gusty winds and abundant lightning, but we should be under a partly in a mostly cloudy sky for any fireworks displays across the metro for this evening. Jason. All right, Katie, thank you. Well, lots of 4th of July events are happening across the Front Range today. Aurora, Lafayette, Westminster and Loveland are some communities that are having fireworks shows tonight. Golden, Frisco and Englewood don't have fireworks, but do have celebrations today. Boulder and Castle Rock also will not have fireworks. You can find a list of fireworks shows, including the ones that are on and the ones that have been canceled, as well as other events up right now on the DenverChannel.com. Firefighters reminding everyone to throw away fireworks properly. This video shows the damage from a garage fire out there in Highlands Ranch. The fire happened around 11 last night when someone threw fireworks in a plastic trash can. The family was able to get out safely. Luckily, no one was hurt. Now, we all know that fireworks can be dangerous and can spark fires, especially in dry Colorado. As we mentioned, multiple shows are canceled this year, and some communities are rethinking the concept altogether. Denver 7's Christian Lopez shows us how some cities are turning to drones to light up the sky. Cities are doing everything they can to reduce the risk of wildfire this 4th of July. Counties across the state have fire restrictions in place that prohibit the use of fireworks in areas where they're not already banned. Other cities and towns are changing up the way they do their fireworks shows, replacing them with drones. For example, in Parker, they will have a drone display this afternoon. It'll be made up of more than 150 drones. Event organizers there say that making the switch to a different type of display was not an easy decision. We all grew up with fireworks, right? Um, and so at the end of the day, it really came down to we love fireworks, but we want our community to be safe. That display in Parker will take place at 6 p.m. this afternoon. And just a reminder, any firework that explodes or leaves the ground is illegal across Colorado. Reporting this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. And of course, on the 4th of July, we do have to talk about pets and including my own dogs. They can get scared from those fireworks. So this is, of course, a busy time of year for animal shelters. As many pets run away from home, they get scared. Denver Animal Protection says it's already nearly at capacity with lots of dogs waiting in the lost and found. We also ask that you don't take them with you to firework shows, parties in the neighborhood. A lot of times these dogs can hear a big, ba big bang and take off running, lose control of the leash, and then we end up with them here at the shelter. <laughs> now, they recommend staying home if your pet is anxious. Turn on the TV and give your pets plenty of treats to keep them from running away. Denver Animal Protection says its after-hours kennels will stay open today for people who are looking for their lost pets. Denver police say an anonymous tip led them to more than 10,000 pounds of illegal fireworks. Officers say the fireworks are being sold out of a home in northwest Denver. Police haven't made any arrests. 
Expect traffic to pick up along I-70 today. This is a live look south of Idaho Springs along Clear Creek. You can see traffic moving pretty well. Today is actually expected to be the least busiest travel day of the holiday weekend. AAA says 660,000 people drove more than 50 miles for the four. Close to a quarter million people are expected to travel through DIA today, and travelers are having to deal with plenty of flight cancellations and delays across the country. At last check, DIA had close to 70 delays and 20 cancellations. And it's not just DIA seeing those delays and cancellations. It's happening across the U.S. as summer holiday travel hits numbers we haven't seen since before the pandemic. Justin Finch is tracking the developments from Washington. Across the country, Americans are queuing up for flights, but many are not taking off. My flight got canceled, but I didn't find out until I got to the gate. Travel troubles frustrating passengers who saw some 9,000 flights delayed and nearly 1,000 canceled between Saturday and Sunday. I won um, Teacher of the Year, and I won a scholarship that I've been waiting two years for. Um, and I am missing my opening reception tonight because of all this situation. The top three most affected airports over the holiday, Hartsfield-Jackson in Atlanta, Newark in New Jersey, and JFK in New York City. Several factors are contributing to this year's 4th of July travel setbacks from pandemic-related staffing shortages hindering the airline industry to severe weather in parts of the country. Still, Americans are eager to travel. TSA reporting Friday as its busiest day over the long holiday. The agency screening nearly 2.5 million passengers, the highest since February 2020. And throughout the summer, experts say travelers should expect even more delays and cancellations. This problem is not going to go away this summer. It's not going to go away this year. I doubt it gets much better before the end of 2023. In Washington, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is reminding air passengers they are entitled to prompt cash refunds for their canceled flights. In the meantime, airlines are readying for Tuesday, set to be another busy day in the air and on the roads. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. People who are at higher risk for monkeypox can now get a vaccine this week through the Colorado Department of Health and Environment. The clinics are tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. You do have to request an appointment online through the CDPHE website. Colorado got the vaccines from the federal government. Colorado had six confirmed monkeypox cases as of last month. A record 31 million Americans are getting health insurance from the Affordable Care Act or Medicaid, and those plans might see a major price hike. Joe St. George looks at how much it could cost. Our planet, it keeps on spinning, but there are a lot of issues going on right now, aren't there? There is inflation, there is Ukraine, there is the abortion debate. Well, the country is bracing for another issue, too, this time involving health care. Some health insurance experts are sounding the alarm that health insurance rates for some will hike dramatically this fall. Congress knows there's a looming problem, but so far, no action's been taken. Remember the Affordable Care Act and how it created new health insurance options for those who don't have insurance? Well, when President Biden signed the American Rescue Plan into law during the height of the pandemic, it created what's known as advanced premium tax credits that made health insurance plans obtained through the government marketplace cheaper. The average family saved $200 a month in premiums. Four out of five consumers were eligible for plans that cost just $10 a month. Enrollment has been up 21% this year in the program with lower prices being a big factor. However, the funding that made the plan so cheap is set to expire at the end of this year with families set to receive notices just a few weeks before Election Day. Some plans may go up by hundreds of dollars each month. More than a dozen Democratic governors wrote to members of Congress last week asking them to take action to prevent what they call, quote, dramatic premium increases soon. There are concerns in states like California, Colorado, Michigan, and Nevada that this could lead to Americans declining health insurance next year. So far, though, it's unclear whether Congress will address this. Republicans have been reluctant to extend any type of pandemic assistance over concerns that will fuel inflation. Democrats, meanwhile, while our hopeful solution could be included in a reconciliation package this summer that would only pass with Democratic votes in the Senate. However, recent history has shown us in this Congress, getting every Democrat on board to pass something can be difficult. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. 
More witnesses are coming forward with new details about the January 6th Capitol insurrection. The additional witnesses follow testimony last week where a former White House aide claimed former President Donald Trump demanded he be taken to the Capitol during the insurrection. The committee investigating the attack says there will be more information released during two public hearings later this month. Pikes Peak is known as America's Mountain, but it's seeing fewer guests this year. Still ahead, why officials say visitor numbers are down. A library in the high country has a card catalog for seeds, and it's helping people grow produce right in their own backyard.